Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new here, my name is Leah and most of my videos are focused on unsolved crimes and mysteries. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. I'm so happy to have you here with me. Today we're going to be talking about a case that's about 30 years old and it's been haunting a lot of people's minds for many years. We are going to be talking about Lee Uchi, a 13-year-old girl that mysteriously disappeared from her home. Lee was home alone for the first time ever. Lee had the day off from school and her mom went to work. An hour after her mom arrived at her job, she tried to call Lee, but nobody picked up the phone. Her mom found it very strange and was a bit worried because the hurricane called Andrew was on the way and she got so worried that she decided to drive back home and check if Lee was okay because she didn't pick up the phone and when she came home she found blood on the walls, the door frames and a pool of blood on the floor and Lee was gone. I definitely have a lot of questions in this case so if you're ready let's do this. Donald Uchi and Vicky Felton met in 1976 when they were both serving in the army in California. They felt the connection straight away and started dating. After a few years, they decided to get married and on August 21st, 1979, they welcomed their daughter and named her Lee Marine Uchi. Unfortunately, the marriage didn't work out for them, so they decided to get a divorce in 1981. Donald Uchi got relocated to an army base in Germany, but still managed to stay in close contact with Lee. She would even go to Germany and visit him, and they would have so much fun trying to teach Lee the German language. They had a very special bond, and both of them always wished that the visits they would last longer. Vigi Felton stopped working in the army and moved with Lee to Topilo in Mississippi, where Vicky would be working in an office. Vicky also had a new man in her life named Barney Yarborough, and it wouldn't take long for them to get married. So Lee and Barney and Vicky, they would be living together in the same house. They also started to go to church, and that's where they met Oscar Kearns. He was a Sunday school teacher, and when he wasn't working, he was usually in the stables riding horses. It was actually the same stables where Lee would ride horses as well. So they knew each other pretty well. Lee was 13 years old and was going to school every day. And she had made some really good friends there. They would also ride in the school bus together. Some of her friends started noticing bruises on Lee, especially on her legs. And one of her best friends, John Bradley, asked her where she had gotten all those bruises. And Lee... She would always say that it was her horse causing them. He remembers one time she came on the school bus with a huge black eye and that really shocked him. But again, Lee just explained that her horse kicked her. There was also a time where some of her schoolmates saw Lee eating some berries from a bush. They tried to stop her and told her to be careful because they could be poisonous and Lee replied that she didn't care, maybe she wanted to die. It was reported to the head office in the school, and they had a talk with Lee. She told them that she didn't mean it, and it was only a joke. Jordan Morse was Lee's boyfriend in middle school, but he went to a different school now, but they would still speak on the phone every afternoon. They were very close. The day Lee disappeared, she was sleeping in her mom's bed. Vicky woke up early by her alarm ringing and Lee was still sleeping. She went to the shower and when she came out, Lee was awake but she was still lying in the bed. They had some breakfast together and about 8 a.m. Vicky she left for work. Lee had the day off from school but she planned to attend an open house event later that day with her grandmother. When Vicky arrived at work, she heard a storm was heading for Topilo and it was going to be Hurricane Andrew. Vicky knew Lee didn't like those kind of weathers, so she decided to call Lee to check if she was okay. It was the first time ever that Lee was going to be home by herself. 
They had developed a special ring because, according to Vicky, Lee didn't like to pick up the phone to a stranger. So Vicky would let the phone ring two or three times and hang up, and then she would call her straight back again. That way, Lee would know that it was her mom calling. But when Vicky called her, she didn't pick up the phone. She tried to call her again, but still no answer. Vicky got very worried and decided to drive back home. When she drove up to her house, she noticed the garage door was open and the light was on. She went to the house and opened the front door and saw blood on the wall. She called out for Lee and ran to every room in the house in a full panic mode to find Lee. She even went to the back side of the house as well, but Lee wasn't there. She decided to call 911, and shortly after, the police arrived. They went inside the house and saw blood on the wall, on Lee's bedroom door, on the door frame with some hair in it, and a fist-sized pool of blood on the floor. They also went into the bathroom, where there also was blood, but it was smeared and had a pink surface, almost like someone tried to clean it up. In the clothes hamper, they found Lee's nightgown with drops of blood on it. It looked like she had a head injury and it had dripped down on the nightgown, but there was no sign of forced entry. Vicky said Lee had just gotten some new clothes for her birthday, but it was missing, and a sleeping bag and Lee's reading glasses were missing as well. The police came to the conclusion that violence had occurred in the home that morning, Donald Urchi was based in Virginia at the time, and Vicky called him to tell him that Lee was missing, but she didn't mention anything about the blood or the nightgown. Two days after, she called him back to let him know about the blood and the nightgown, and Donald decided to take a one-month leave from work and came to Topilo to help in the search for Lee. The police interviewed both Barney, Vicky and Donald and they decided to take them to the police station to do polygraph tests. Barney passed the test and he also had an alibi so he was cleared. Donald Lucci also passed the test and he also had an alibi because he was in Virginia at the time she went missing. But Vicky did not pass her test. It showed signs of deception. The police called in the FBI to help them with the case, and they did two more polygraphs on Vicky. And those two tests also showed signs of deception. So she had three tests done all together, and all three polygraph tests showed signs of deception. Vicky kept saying she didn't have anything to do with Lee's disappearance, and she couldn't explain why she didn't pass the tests. The police searched everywhere for Lee, mostly focused on the woods. Donald would also help in the search, and some of the locals told him to look at Vicky, and he replied to them that he already was, because he wasn't sure if Vicky had hurt Lee, because he knew that she had a very bad temper. Barney and Vicky, they decided to separate a few weeks before Lee went missing but Barney would still join the search and he did everything he could to help find Lee. The 4th of September 1992, eight days after Lee went missing, a worker at McDonald's in Booneville told the police that they had seen a girl in the restaurant drive through that looked exactly like Lee. The police tracked down the girl and unfortunately it turned out that it wasn't Lee. Five days later, September 9th, a package was delivered to Vicky's house, but it was addressed to Barney. So Vicky called him and said he had received a package, so he came to the house and they opened it together. The package was postmarked from Booneville, where the full sighting had been of Lee. When they opened the package, the only thing they found inside was Lee's reading glasses. There was no note or anything. They called the police and told them about the package and the police, they tested it for everything. And it turned out that the stamps on the packet, they were put on with water instead of saliva. Other than the glasses, there was nothing found on this package. 
Only nine months after Lee disappeared, Oscar Kearns, the Sunday school teacher, kidnapped a ninth grade girl he had met through a Tupelo church, raping her in Memphis, Tennessee. He went to her house and told her he was going to drive her to school. This girl knew him from church, so she trusted him and didn't have a problem with that. He drove her to a very remote area where he raped her and then after he drove her to school. The girl reported the incident to the police and Oscar, he pled guilty and got eight years in prison. But Oscar Kearns, he only served half his time, so he was out again after four years. Oscar Kearns was convicted again in 1999 for kidnapping a married couple and raping the wife. So Oscar, he went back to prison where he would serve two decades. He was then released again in 2019 and in 2021 he passed away. Vicky has told the police several times that she is 100% sure that Oscar Kearns, he had something to do with her daughter's disappearance. The police wanted to interview Oscar Kearns about Lee's disappearance, but he refused to talk to them. He did agree to do a polygraph test if his lawyer said that was okay, but his lawyer said no, and unfortunately, Oscar Kearns passed away and he never said anything or gave any information about Lee Urchi. Barney and Vicky ended up getting their divorce and Vicky left her house in Tulipo. Donald had to go back to work in the army. Lee has never been found and until this day it still remains a big mystery. What happened to Lee Urchi? So let's go over some questions that I have in this case, because there's some things that just doesn't make sense to me at all. And I've been looking everywhere online to find the answers and can't find them. So I hope you can help me sort this out because it's driving me nuts and it doesn't make sense. So first of all, the police said they found her nightgown in the hamper and the nightgown had drips of blood on it, like she's been dripping from a wound. And they said on the floor was a pretty big pool of blood. There was blood on the door frame to her room with hair in it. And there was blood on the wall as well. That indicates a pretty big wound. So, if Lee was wearing that nightgown, I remember those old-fashioned nightgowns for young girls. It's a nightgown that's pretty much up to here and you can't get it off unless you pull it over your head. So if she has a pretty big head wound, there wouldn't be drips of blood on the nightgown. There would be smears. It's exactly the same when a woman that's wearing makeup, when she has a, a blouse on or a t-shirt or whatever, when she had that on and she takes it off, the edge of the t-shirt will probably have her makeup on it because it's the neck is so tight, it, it can't help but touch at the back of your head or your face. So if she's bleeding that much, there would be smears of blood on her nightgown, not just drops. So in my opinion, she wasn't wearing the nightgown when she got attacked. Another thing is, if there was a stranger in the house that attacked Lee, how would he know where to find a sleeping bag? If you go into a stranger's house, where, where would you guess a sleeping bag would be? In the basement? In the attic? In the garage? Who knows? How would how would he know where to find a sleeping bag? And this is, we are talking a timeline, like one hour, maybe one and a half hour. And another question is, I know I have a lot of them, but I'm just thinking, 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 and turning and twisting and turning everything. So that brings up a lot of questions. Um, Vicky. She said it was the first time that Lee was home by herself. 
but at the same time, she said they had developed a special ring on the phone because Lee didn't like to talk to strangers. So Vicky would call first and let the phone ring, I think it was two or three times, and then she would hang up the phone. And then she would call straight back because that way Lee would know it was her mother. So if Lee doesn't like strangers, what makes them think that she would open the door to a stranger? And how can they develop a special ring? It was the first time Lee was home alone. So when exactly did they develop the special ring? I don't get it. Am I just blonde? No. Isn't it strange? And another thing that also struck me is that Lee was talking to her boyfriend, Jordan Morse, every afternoon on the phone. So did they have a special ring as well? Or was the special ring only when her mother called her? When Vicky called uh, Lee's father to tell him that Lee was missing, she didn't tell him anything about any blood or anything else. She only said she was missing. Why? Maybe because Donald said in an interview that Vicky had a very, very bad temper. So she would know if she called him and told him that Lee was missing and there was blood everywhere, he would automatically think, you did it. Maybe that's why she didn't say anything. It took her two days to tell him about the blood and the evidence in the house. Is not that's not normal behavior. Donald actually came to Toledo to help search for Lee, and some of the locals they told him to look at Vicky, and he said to them, "I already am." Wow, really? Why would you look at your child's mother like that, unless she was a hardcore woman? She was a trained interrogator. She was a military woman and she was not small. Maybe he's a domestic violence victim. Maybe she was <laughs> maybe she was slapping him. I don't know and I didn't see that anywhere. It's just brainstorming. We don't know. There must be a reason he says that she has a very bad temper. I can't help thinking, why would you look at your daughter's mom, your own daughter's mom, your own ex-wife, and think, maybe you hurt her. That's a huge red flag for me. Very, very big, big red flag. Because if, if my daughter, she went missing, and there was blood everywhere. I, I wouldn't even think about looking at her dad and say, I think it's you. <laughs> no way. <laughs> There's no way. But he doesn't even think twice. He just tells the locals, I already am looking at her. Wow. And another thing is, it was the first time Lee was home by herself. How would anyone know that if someone targeted their house? I don't think Vicky was the kind of woman that you want to mess with. She's a trained interrogator. She was in the army. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't want to mess with her. She looks like a pretty big woman. Oh my God. <laughs> so someone would know that Lee was home alone. The coincidence that the very first time she's home alone, she gets attacked and kidnapped. No, no, I'm not buying it. I did see online there was rumors about Barney uh, abusing Lee and hurting her, even locking her out of the house as a punishment. But I'm not going to go further into that because that's hearsay. There's absolutely no proof of it at all. And he also passed a lie detector test. And he had an alibi, so I don't think it's him. 
But Vicky, she did three polygraphs. One with the police and two with the FBI. And she didn't pass any of them. The test showed signs of deception. Is it called deception? I think so. <laughs> That's insane. And she, and she said, I don't know what to say. When your child goes missing, it, it's normal that your body reacts. But why didn't, why didn't they react with the, her father that she was extremely close to? And Bonnie, both of them passed. Why didn't you pass? And I don't, I don't understand why they let her off the hook that easy. That easy. There would have been lots of witnesses about her bruises, her black eye. Uh, she didn't pass a polygraph. I'm not saying Vicky did it, but there's definitely some things that doesn't make sense. And there are things I feel like should have been questioned more. Or is it just me? Lee's reading glasses was, was sent from Boone, Booneville to their home address and it was sent to Barney. And the police thinks these glasses were sent to the home address to throw them off the case. I'm not a professional and I'm not an investigator, but to me that's a completely different message. To me it's like you don't have to look for her anymore. Because look what I have. She doesn't need her glasses anymore. Because maybe she because she passed away. I don't I don't think it was to throw them off the case, but I do agree. It's very, very, very extremely strange. There's no note. There's no ransom though. That there's no nothing. This case is very very twisted. And I think the mom got off the hook way too easy. She has a huge temper. Her child has bruises all the time, even a huge black eye. And she do three polygraphs and she shows signs of deception in all of them. Ah, don't you think they should have pushed her a bit more? Just my opinion. I think she got away too easy. They, they, sh you, why why do you do a polygraph on someone and then just want to let you know you didn't pass. Let's do another one. And then they do another one. And again, signs of deception. You know what? Just in case, we're going to do a third one. And they do a third one. Signs of deception. Okay, well, thank you and have a nice day. She saw, shows signs of deception in all three polygraphs. The other people who got tested, they passed. Why didn't she pass the test? I, it's very frustrating. So let's say that Oscar did this. I, I could imagine that he could have done this. He's a pretty good suspect. Nine months after Lee went missing, he actually kidnapped a 15-year-old girl. He came to her house pretending he was going to drive her to school. And she already knew him from church, so she wasn't worried. So she went with him and he took her to a remote area where he raped her and then drove her to school where she reported him to the police. Maybe he also came to Lee's house after Vicky, she went to work with the same excuse that he was going to drive her to school. And when Lee told him she wasn't going to school that day, he was getting annoyed because in his mind, she was already halfway out the house. So maybe he attacked her right there and then. And maybe Lee started screaming and fighting him and he panicked. And just to keep her quiet, he bangs her head or something and kills her, maybe by accident. Lee's classmate, who was 
super close to Lee, John Bradley. I saw an interview with him and he remembers Lee like it was yesterday. And they would always drive the school bus together and look after each other. They were talking all the time. He spoke so highly of Lee and he remembers she had a lot of bruises on her body, especially her legs. And he would ask her, where did all those bruises come from? And she would always blame the horse. Really? And then he said, one day she came on the school bus. She had a huge black eye and he was like, oh my God, what happened to you? And she said she got kicked by her horse. I'm not buying that. Do you have any idea what injuries a child would get if they got kicked by a horse? I don't think you would just get a black eye. I actually looked it up online. Children go to the hospital. Some of them get knocked out and end up with broken this and this. And she was definitely not hit by a horse. And looking back, he's not buying it either. He actually said he was so worried about her and what was going on at home. And he said, if I had known back then what I know now, I would have called the police myself. Because him and others were sure something was going on in that house. And he said she had bruises all the time. Then she comes with a huge black eye and suddenly she disappears and nobody ever sees her again. That's, ah, uh, that's foul play, do you think? Huge red flag. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you can answer some of my questions in the comment section down below. And please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Just boop, 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 and then you subscribe. And to the people who already hit the subscribe button, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate your support. So until the next one, take care and stay safe. Bye.